conquest program and I had no direction on or what to expect cultural wise. I thought I was just walking into a treatment break a treatment based program that was gonna only focus on what it's gonna take on the therapeutic side of prevention for substance abuse. But on my day and I got here, I was welcomed by Mr. Redfoot, Mr. Thomas Monez, Mr. Chris Hernandez, and a brother who's unfortunately no longer here in the building, but he was a well-respected well resident of Conquest, and that was Travis Nakadene. And on my second day here, they gave me the honor to be the coordinator for the Native American culture uh, class. <clears throat> so I took the initiative, and I placed that on my shoulders, and I carried it with me, and I still do that to this day. And so, with my effort and my contribution, I was able to put forth this presentation on behalf of my Northern New people, and what it is to explain to you guys the differences between cultures of indigenous tribes, not only throughout America, but here for our state, Utah. When we honor these colors, we, we honor the state flag, and we honor the American flag, and we gotta find a balance point because in, in today's world, conflict resides in being called Native Americans or in Native Indians. Because they say that if you call yourself a native, you're going to disrespect those brothers and sisters of ours in Canada who call themselves aboriginals. If you call yourself Indian, you're going to respect our brothers and sisters from the east, who are the eastern Indians. So I tie this all in together and I look upon all of us as United States citizens and here in this country and for a long period of time this, uh, this controversy and this conflict you know, has brought a lot of abuse to indigenous people. And so for my balancing point when I first got here and I was introducing myself throughout this community I introduced myself as a Native American Indian from the Northern New Indian tribe because our tribe is a federally recognized it's a federally recognized uh, tribe by the government and on our seal it says Northern New Indian Tribe Agency and uh, so I got some speakers here that are going to talk on behalf of that agency and how this all intertwines it to be culturalistic in today's world where we also face addictions and with that said, for myself, my last name, Twist, it's like my reservation. It's a checkerboard. <laughs> you know, my family name is Chimburus. And that name is still held in tribal council to this day. But my dad, he is from uh, Pine Ridge, South Dakota. But when I was born, my mother enrolled me into the Northern Ute Tribe. So therefore, I become a Northern Ute Tribe member. And it was something that I take very seriously and very to my heart. <clears throat> without that support growing up, I feel I'd be, as many of us always feel, lost and always in a struggle without direction without a sense of which way to go, without a sense of where, to, where we belong. And a lot of us find that belonging through Christ. A lot of us find that belonging through Buddhism. Something that being a Northern Ute, being a Native American Indian has taught me was to be diverse, was to be open to this big thing we call the universe. And so I tied in my roots, my cultures, into modern day culture and I become stronger in that aspect to get up here and present this to you guys. And what I want to let the administration know when, because uh, there's a lot of changes facing the prison. And, but before I get there, I want to thank the Utah State Department of Corrections for allowing indigenous people to have their cultural practices in these facilities. Gunnison, 
is a well-established facility. And a lot of these things that we're presenting to you guys today have come from Gunnison. Mr. Hernandez and I have spent some time there and we brought these practices up here to the promontory building. And so when this building, when it faces these changes, we want to recognize the beliefs that this direction has taken us to face our troubles along the struggles of recovery and what it is to hold into our hearts and keep dear so that we travel on these good ways and these good paths. And we intertwine and we become very, very, very social with those outside of tribalistic beliefs. Which is why we incorporate the Polynesians and the Asians and all the tribes throughout America the Aztecs, the Mexicans, all of these races and culturals are all intertwined because it all means one thing and that's being indigenous. Being of this land and the beliefs that we practice and that we bring before you, we don't do it to, for, a, for the oppression, but we do it to teach each and every one of those who are non-indigenous that they may share and be a part of something greater than themselves because that's what recovery teaches us is to find a higher power and like I said I come from the uh, Northern Ute Indian Tribe Agency the homeland is the Uinta Basin just recently <clears throat> over the past at the end of 2014 the Northern Ute Tribe once again became the biggest Indian tribe to have the most uh, recognized land. We recently fought for and recovered 20,000 acres of non-industrialized land. I mean, there's, this is all forest, and we're going to use that to preserve the game and all of our cultural beliefs. We're going to intertwine all of that, and that's something to be proud of. When I look at my tribe, I look to the business leaders, I look to those coordinators, I look to those who are from the tiniest of social service workers who help and produce something to put forth a, in the right direction to help and benefit not just only the people of the, of the tribe, but to benefit all of the UNA Basin. So that's something I hold dear to me and that's something I apply here in the Conquest program. Now as I was saying, when, this, when the prison faces the changes, we want to recognize that this right here, what we establish and what we, what we believe in and what we create goes with it in a good direction. That it helps guide into a better and positive direction so that we can rehabilitate ourselves and have something to lean on and we can have something to look forward to in our futures. And again, once again, I hope you enjoy the songs that we have for you guys in this here in this little awareness that we got going. And with that, I have a member of the Northern U Tribe who's coming here to speak on behalf of what it is for him to be in conquest on the recovery side and what it is for him to have a cultural class to tie all of this into. And without further ado, Give it up. Big round of applause for Mr. Ray. All right, Ray! All right, Ray! Woo! Aww. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rachel Carey. I am part of the Northern Ute Tribe. Um, first, uh, let me start by saying I really appreciate being in this program. And not only the Native American side or the cultural side, just the Conquest program in general because of all the opportunities that they have for each and every one of us. Uh, making, a, making a change is hard, especially the path that I was going down. I was going nowhere fast. Coming here, I, I, get, I, I get to see different points of views from different inmates, different, different uh, ways about going, about handling situations, good or bad. And I learned from that, and every Saturday Kevin comes out for Circle Talk, Talking Circle. 
and uh, we go out there and get a talk about what bothers us or different ways to go about recovery. And I appreciate that because I've had them never tried to honestly recover. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. All right.